Blau und weiß sein Leben lang. Herzlich willkommen zurück auf Schalke America. Welcome to episode 169. I'm your host, Richard Carmen. Joining me as always, co-host Jack Mangan. How are we doing on this uh, Misery Monday podcast on a Tuesday? Wow, that was a lot you threw at me right there. Yeah, certainly not a Victory Monday podcast and not a no. Monday podcast at all. As it, Yes, it is correct. It is Tuesday. Uh, highly unfortunate that the very end, end of our intro video says stunning second half from Schalke because uh, there was not a stunning second half from Schalke this weekend, oh. nor stunning first half. Uh, any halves to speak of whatsoever. Um, uh, poor result. Uh, one that we did not need, and it was a poor performance as well. So not just a matter of the scoreline, but a matter of how we arrived uh, at that scoreline. Hey, what it do, baby? What it do? What it do? Yeah, it was um, lackluster to say the least. Uh, very, uh, I don't even know. I don't know where to get with this. I mean, it's like for nothing, for nothing. Um, yeah, well, I mean, we, coming into this weekend, we we talked about um, you know this is a Leverkusen team that, despite being in the depths of the table, has a lot of talent and is potentially you know not a sleeping giant necessarily, but who knows? I mean, now with with the, with the managerial change, which we'll get into, um, they may end up going on a run here. Still, plenty of time left in the season to accomplish that and end up at you know um, the European place battle. Uh, you know, come the sharp end of the season. But um, yeah, we had some concerns uh, because this was a, a team that we felt like was probably uh, going to outclass us uh, regardless of, once again, their, their table position. Um, yeah. And that's kind of <laughs> what ended up happening. And that was, once again, uh, kind of spurred on by the managerial change. Something else that you mentioned on the previous podcast of not wanting to happen. You're always the one who brings up the new manager bump. And then, of course, after our podcast, Leverkusen parting ways with their manager. And who did they bring in, Richard? Xabi Alonso, former former Bayern Munich player, Liverpool player. Um, never heard of him. You know, never heard of him either. Yeah, yeah. Never heard of him. Gorgeous guy. Um, yeah, no. It's like Leverkusen were listening to our podcast. As soon as our podcast ended, they're like, oh, 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 new manager bump coming. Uh, and as soon as yep. they hired Xabi Alonso, whether he has experience or not, it didn't matter. They were going to get that bump. Um, we talked about how... Leverkusen are an underperforming team. They certainly have much more talented players than we do. They're just massively underachieving. You know, we're playing bad. They're massively underachieving. And then new manager bump comes in, and sure enough, it's real, Jack. And uh, Xabi Alonso, we'll see what he's what he can do with them. I mean, they may go on a run. And it's funny, right? Both teams are sitting pretty much in the same place in the table, one, one, one place difference. And it's all this optimism with Leverkusen. New manager, they just beat us 4 nothing. That The sky's the limit. Us, on the other hand, we still got uh, Cosmo Kramer on the bench. And uh, we have no idea what's going on. What's he doing? So disorganized. And we don't know where it's going to go from here. It's a, it's, it's a funny thing, this football, huh? Yeah, well, I, I think a, uh, a home encounter versus Schalke was probably just what the doctor ordered yeah. for Leverkusen to kind of like get their season back on track. Probably uh, a pretty attractive opponent for um javi alonso to come in yeah. uh and uh kind of make his mark against and uh yeah they looked uh very well organized and, and pretty well drilled despite having only been under him for you know a matter of days at the time they played us and uh yeah i think some of our worst fears for this match were, were ultimately uh realized and uh hard questions to be asked of Cromer now at this point obviously yeah yeah the question is uh, also when do we play ourselves right we need that we need that opportunity as well um yeah lots of questions to be asked of Cromer. i mean Many people shouting, I've converted to the masses. But the questions are asked, when will he go? I mean, the team looks disorganized. This is this not the shock we saw from last year at all when majority of the team is the same, minus the coach and a few players here. Well, it's a lot of players, honestly. But um, it's it's Schroeder's guy. Schroeder signed this guy. And so you want, you know there's going to be a longer leash than, than the normal um, so you wonder how long is this going to happen? Um, we got another couple games here. We got Hoff a double with the Hoffenheim coming up with a Pokal in the league. Um, got Hertha on the horizon as well. Byron is not too far away. So I don't know. I don't know, Jack. I d 
I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I would say overall in terms of, uh, you know, the start of the season was was certainly inconsistent and yeah. not inspiring in terms of, you know, the heights we reached in any of those performances. But I think you'd look at maybe the first few matches of the season and you would say, hey, this isn't going to make for, um, you know, a season of, of particularly attractive football to enjoy. But these kind of performances with the squad we have could probably get us to safety. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, once again, that, that's all we really need to worry about this year is trying to maintain the foothold in the Bundesliga and establish a platform from which to try to build back to the heights of the table that we used to, you know, enjoy uh, with some regularity. Um, unfortunately, uh, in in the matches following that initial stretch, it, it's deteriorated pretty quickly. Uh, we've lost three of our last five um, with the win. Uh, sorry, with three of our last five we lost. We had a win and a draw as well. The win came against Buckham, who are bottom of the table, and the draw came against Stuttgart, who are second bottom in the table. So the only results we've had in the past five games are the two teams that are now directly below us because we are now in the relegation zone as yep. well, finally, after that result, slipping down to the 16th place. So, um, yeah, things are not promising. And once again, as we said off the top, it's not just that it was a 4 0 result so that, you know, the Schalke 04 memes can return to us on Twitter for the 30th time in the past, <laughs> you know, two or three seasons. Oh but it was also the fact that, you know, what was our XG in this game? 0. 0.19. 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2. So, this is, so we, we've now had one third of our matches in the Bundesliga this season where, we, where we've managed less than 0. 0.5 XG in a game. Um, this was an issue with Cromer previously, mm-hmm. uh, and, and it's it's becoming an issue once again. Uh, a complete lack of cohesion in possession, no really discernible plan to progress the ball outside of you know aerial passes, long balls. Um, I mean, even even a lot of our, like short and medium range passes are in the air rather than players' feet. It's making it very difficult to control things and just leading to you know additional losses of possession. It's a huge problem at the moment, and you can see um, 60-40 in possession, not the most lopsided possible, but. Certainly felt more lopsided than that, honestly. I think uh, the second we half the we game. got a lot more because we were playing catch up, but the first half was certainly like 70 30, 75, 25. It was pretty bad the first half. Yeah. And I mean, interestingly enough, for a lot of the first half, they actually didn't have many clear cut chances until the floodgates just sort of suddenly opened. <laughs> but even prior to that point, they definitely appeared to be in control and certainly uh, the better of the two teams out there. For sure. For sure. And what also makes this loss bad is because it was a 17th place team we lost four nothing to it wasn't just it was Leverkusen it was I mean yeah but they were 17th place on the table and then got got destroyed by them um did not look like we were interested in the game at all I mean looking at the lineup Schwoloff didn't have a great game Bruner good to see him back I thought he was okay Grimal Yoshida more um was an injury in this game wasn't there um I don't remember anymore just so long ago Trexler was okay. Kraus, Flick, Bolter. I mean, no one really stood up for me in this game. Uh, it was just... Turret and Bolter didn't get any opportunities because we were hoofing the ball long. And yeah, rarely correct. reached it. And yeah, I kept complaining was... during the watch-along is that... What am I... I know we said this last podcast too. We're no analysts, but we see this isn't working. Why did they keep doing this? And even on the live stream, everyone's like, yeah, what the hell? I mean, we all see this. How do they not see this? It's That's the fury in part. It's, like, it's obvious things that need to stop are yeah not. there there was a funny moment I, I i don't recall at what point of the match this was i believe it was in the first half at some point and, and florian flick um wins the ball kind of in our own corner so in our you know defensive final third um turns around and then ultimately tries to like play sort of a you know an aerial through ball to like set somebody free on transition misses him by you know 10 15 yards ball gets turned over and cromer's on the sideline and he's just like like you know like you know calm it down <laughs> slow it down and, and i'm like i'm like why is that your reaction to that at this moment as opposed to at any point during the last three or four games when it seems like i mean presumably that's you know what the directive directive has been from the manager otherwise um he isn't nearly as animated on the sidelines as i, was, as I would expect him to be if his team are attempting to progress the balls in ways that he is not comfortable with them doing and not telling them to do um so i found that a little bit confusing and concerning um and you know the funny thing is if that passing percentage on the screen at the moment is accurate that's one of our better pass completion games in a while <laughs> it is. that's the sad part <laughs> which yeah i mean it did a four no loss so there you go i mean who cares but um yeah not not good uh we saw i mean it, we haven't even really talked about what the lineups were ultimately until you just brought that up but, but yeah we saw the bolter um not the bolter uh, sorry the uh the polter tarada combo again after that yeah. was finally um unveiled initially right as a substitute appearance against dortmund and then the start last week Bruner making his return to the lineup after a bunch of injuries. Yeah. Um, I, I, the Tirada Poulter thing, they're only they're only going to be as effective as the extent to which you can bring them into the game. 
and that requires service. These are these are not the most you know mobile um, of, of striker combinations. I mean, it's and you, you know we saw Tobias Moore right in the starting lineup, which is something else that we had discussed recently about whether or not we should see him. But we've been talking about playing him once again more as an advanced offensive minded player, either either like a left mid or some sort of winger. Um, and then have sort of a double stack with him and Oyan. Instead, we see him start this game at left back, and I mean, Frimpong just feasted oh my on, on on us all game really, but especially on more in the first half. And it, you know, he did not look solid defensively uh, at all. Um, and then because of how much pressure he was under, uh, wasn't able to get forward and influence the game in, in the areas that you know we, we would find him probably most valuable. And when we're talking about you know giving more and more minutes, um, we're talking about giving more minutes. Uh, mm-hmm you and I aren't talking about his defensive capabilities. That's not like, no. you know, the context in which we're talking about him potentially getting more playing time. It's all in terms of what he can contribute in possession. And uh, so, yeah, I find once again, the left back thing, just slightly puzzling. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we'd be screaming for him and Oyan to be out there together. Well, sure enough, Oyan replaces him at halftime. Um, and I, then we, uh, something we also, we talked about maybe seeing under there giving some offensive ability on the right hand side. He comes in for, uh, who did he come in for? A flick? Um, I just had Polter. 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 Yeah, Polter, he Polter. came in at halftime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, again, it, it wasn't that the lineups were bad. It was that the organization, the game plan was wrong. I mean, like, four goals, two goals in the first half. Um, you had, like I said, it was, even though it was 0 0 for 35, 36 minutes, it looked like it was one side. We're just waiting for the dam to break. And sure enough, uh, Diaby scored with a rock in the 38th. Frimpong scored just three minutes later. I mean, like, instantly the floodgates open. Uh, coming out of the second half, Frimpong scored again, and then Paulinho to put us out of our misery. I mean, this game could have been a lot worse than 4 nothing. Honestly, that's how good Leverkusen looked against us. We just sat back and allowed them to do whatever they wanted. This isn't Bayern Munich. This isn't. And we yeah. let them play like they were. Uh, really bad. Just to go through the goals real quick. Um I mean, the first one, that's you can chalk that up to, hey, it's a good shot by yeah. Diaby. You know, well done, whatever. But no pressure. Um, backed no pressure. off a little bit. Yeah, backed off a little bit. Certainly, though, and what I would say, though, despite how well hit that was and the extent that, you know, Shvalov may not have been anticipating him taking a shot from that distance, as, as despite the pace, that is not a, a ball that is grazing the crossbar and that is not a ball that is in the corner at no. all. No. So that is eminently savable and i'm not saying it's the easiest shot possible but it's not like he had to particularly move that far to get to it he just didn't react um so not the best moment for for, for Schwalab. i'm not really trying to blame anybody too much for that but i do want to bring up that I, I think that was certainly reachable from him um and then i mean as shalka goes so does yoshida apparently um you know the first couple matches of the season when, when we had more possession and he wasn't getting exposed as much on the counter he looked okay because he was composed in possession and that's kind of what we needed there's a steady head back there alongside vandenberg or whoever um he's getting smoked now on the counter his pace is a problem and unfortunately he's not he's not composed in possession either there's been numerous occasions in the past few matches where he's been caught almost giving giving the ball away actually i think a, a couple times yeah. if not almost giving the ball away near the goal just because somebody's closing him down and they can't get rid of the ball quick enough. It's like naive. It's like he looks like he's tired. I don't know what the situation is, but Yoshida has declined a little bit as well. Um, Frimpong, as I mentioned, you know, feasted on the right-hand side the entire time. Um, poor communication between Moore and Yoshida mm-hmm. in the box to cover that. Frimpong ultimately just runs right past us, and like no one reacts to it, and he slots the ball home. Far too easy of a goal. Um, Frimpong second is, is once again, it's, it's a through ball that Yoshida gets burned on. You could argue that, you know, Grimo shouldn't have stepped up and should have stayed home to make it more difficult for him to run in. But, um, it's another example of Yoshida getting caught. And then, you know, the final mat, the final one too, is just, I think it's Polino gets in behind. I forget who he gets. It could have been Bruner that he got in behind. I forget, but, um, Yoshida can't, Yoshida's off the pitch at that point, but like no one can pick this up. Like, uh, so t- for us to concede like two or three goals that are basically just, people making straight runs in behind our defense and like a ball. I mean, it's, it's, it was so simple. Um, it's for them to do this. Yeah. It, it's a problem. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Um, disappointing how we conceded a lot of these disappointing, uh, on the offensive end in possession as well. Nothing to offer. Once again, we talked about, you know, point yeah. two XG or whatever. I can't even remember a clear cut chance that we had. I, I can't, I can't conjure a single one of those up to memory. Um, Toronto had one, 
Um, but still, it wasn't. That was it. I think that was all we really had. I don't even know how we got three corners in the game, honestly. It was three three corners. That was a surprising side of the day for me. Three three with the corners with all that yeah. domination. And you know what? To, uh, to bail Cromer out ever so slightly, not that he deserves it to some extent. There's absolutely nothing tactical about players not being able to deliver balls. Yeah. In the box, because the number of times that somebody's tried to play a ball into the box and it's been 15, 20 yards over oh. the heads of any nearest player is honestly absurd. And, and like, that's just not good enough. And that's entirely on the players as well. So yeah. I mean, it's sloppy. It's 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 bad. Um, and yeah. uh, I think Cromer probably has. One more poor performance in him before the, the the trigger is pulled i think on his and once again who knows what the final situation is but if we have another result next week against hoffenheim that i'm not saying it has to be four nil but if it's that inept yeah. uh in possession and also give up a couple goals i think he's gonna yeah. be gone because we can't risk relegation honestly we have to we have to make a change we do we do and we got the big international break the world cup break coming up the end of november so you have at least a month there to train a team plus whatever time you do from between then and now um but then who's available? I don't know. I mean, you could try to get Raul from the Real Madrid Castilla team. Um, I mean, there you go, Xavi Alonso and Raul. Let's, let's run it back. <laughs> All the old I mean, boys. I mean, but uh, there's not many great options and there's not many that we can afford. So you probably go get Raul or uh, somebody else, you know, um, that Rice, uh, right? Because he's well, that's what I didn't like, right? See, everyone's saying Thomas Rice, Thomas Rice. Yeah, we beat him. We beat him. Our only win is against Thomas Rice this year. Why would you want him? And it's, I get it. I get it. They talked about Cromer was the right guy because he has the Schalke spirit in him. He has the mentality that we look for. I want to win. Forget the spirits and all. I want to win. And I don't want to go back to the Svaita League. The Svaita League, we might come back out. We might be Hamburg. We got lucky last year. I mean, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were in sixth place with, what, eight, nine games to go? Yeah. Um, I mean, th that was not looking like it was going to end in promotion for us until it somehow suddenly did. Um, <laughs> give it Buskins to the end of the season. And once again, second podcast in a row. I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, the, the, yeah, the I mean, the Rice thing, I know there was some talk about like us, maybe he, him being our preferred candidate all along. Um, but that, that that's not going to be an inspiring move. Um, and it's not that it has to be a name. I'm not saying that Tedesco wasn't a name, for example. He was not, you know, a well-known quantity i mean he had coached what like ow for the final few yeah. games of the season to avoid relegation and somebody yeah. jumped into the and, but yeah so it doesn't have to be a name. Place. Yeah. yeah i mean exactly you know he had success with us and has had success at subsequent clubs you know despite the way his tenure at Schalke ultimately ended so i'm not he won the it DFB be, yeah i'm not saying it has to be somebody but i'm just like I, yeah. I i just don't know how like a thomas rice for example is going to inspire any additional confidence um in the team and uh you know the Schalke job is, is still attractive it's certainly not as attractive as it used to be for a number of reasons so i'm realistic about you know the kind of people that we can attract but um man yeah this is this is very very quickly kind of starting to feel a little bit like um like like baum and like you know that kind of Gross. thing and so, suddenly we have we have three managers before like february and then we're like you know what i don't know so yeah yeah yeah. And I'm getting ahead of myself because we haven't even let go of Cromer yet. And like I said, he still has time to turn it around. If for some reason we have a strong bounce back performance against Hoffenheim, and then the next few matches after that, you know, we're we're mixing in some results. Like he could, you know, the narrative can change very quickly because as I mean, the old line, it's a results driven business. But like we appear to be on the like we're not even heading in the right direction. We're, we're on borderline in free fall at the moment. Is how it's coming across to me watching these games the past you know four or five weeks. It's steadily getting worse. It's not just like. Came out of nowhere. It's been getting worse. You no, know, first few games of the season, I thought, yeah, I don't think we're going to be in, in a Europa League spot or Champions League spot, but I thought we could probably be mid-table. I mean, honestly, we look decent enough. We don't look like a world beaters by anything, but we look like we belong in the league. And it's steadily dropped from there. Um, when we had hired, going back to Yoshida, when we had hired, when we signed him, I went on a rant about how I didn't like the signing at all. And part of it is part of his truth, but it's also a little bit premature. It's funny because uh, after the match, uh, our buddy Cedric Shaka Corner uh, tweeted back and is like, looks like you were on point with that rant. It's <laughs> like, yeah, I know. But uh, I mean, and it is. He need, The team, he needs a good system in front of him to do well. And when the system collapses, his weaknesses show big time. And it did from Pong and everybody else is beating with pace, um, bad passes and all that such. And then 
Yeah, I don't know. It just is. It just isn't free fall at the moment, and, and it's funny where we're at at the moment because we do look like we're in free fall, and it did look like we could get a new manager, and who knows what the the future holds. But again, like you just said, we rattle off a win against Hoffenheim or a couple wins in a row here, and flip the switch, and he may be the guy who leads us safely at a promotion. I mean, uh, at a relegation. So it's we're at that point, and we don't know where we at. But how long do you give that leash? I mean, we're getting to the point where point of no return right it's getting dangerously close to that and i know probably realistically we saw that in the year when the losing streak started it started in the second half of the season first game right against gladbach after we beat them went downhill from there so technically that's the breaking point but you want to do it if you want to do anything it's got to be before the international break coming here the world cup yeah um because then you got at least a month with a new guy to get the team back up to snuff so and and yeah i mean results are what what matters but once again I, I think the leash would be longer if the performances had been better than what they had been over the past couple of weeks sure because yeah. it, it is it is reminiscent of of the performances where we go down a goal or two and then it, the game just ends up three four five nil and we are in we're offering nothing in possession mm. there was nothing created um and it, it's almost like the team selection doesn't doesn't mirror that reality yeah like once again in a, in a team where recently you have not been able to provide consistent service, not not that Toronto didn't have opportunities last week because he did, he had he had a couple, but like this has been a consistent issue all season in general is he's not getting you know the volume of opportunity that he was used to last season. Knowing that, why are you selecting the attacking options that you're selecting? You have to be able to adjust. And I'm not saying you suddenly just go play a you know like a, a forwardless formation where it's like you know like a, it's a five five formation with you know what I mean. Like I'm not yeah. like saying that, but like I, I just. To play two of them, a striker partnership, where both of them are kind of that same similar profile, is just insane to me. Given what the team is incapable of producing for them at this moment, um, and yeah, and then once again, like like the, the playing Tobias more at, at left back, like you want to give him minutes, great, we could use him, but that's not where we can use him at the moment, in my opinion. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, he's not, I don't know. So it, it's it's frustrating. It's there's so much obviously that goes into this that we as is like you know casual fans from across the pond are never going to like understand and i'm not trying to claim that like you know we're great analysts or coaches or anything but um when there's repeated issues that are very blatant over the course of a, like a couple weeks and, and there's seemingly no it, it it doesn't even appear that it's coming across as if we're trying to change it it just seems like we're yeah. kind of committed to this style of play for whatever reason and hoping that we just kind of like throw some darts to the board and get the get the results we win to ultimately escape and i'm just yeah i'm rapidly losing faith in it we talk about style of, style of play right how last year completely different style of play we were similar style of play to verta bremen uh this year for whatever reason we go into the, the new division we decide to play defensive and feel that's the best way for us to get out reverter doesn't change the damn thing um where they sit right now one point off a champions league spot one point off they're on 15 points in fifth place in the league and we are in 16th place they almost have as many points as we have places in the table uh, which is bad um yeah it's i don't know i mean it could change very quickly here i mean it looks like it might change here for leverkusen here but uh it's just so if we we look like we had any kind of idea what we're doing, we're just getting beat, you know, two one or one nothing. Okay, but like you said, it's just rapidly falling apart. Where it looks like we don't know what we're doing here, and it's that's the infuriating part. And then you look at the schedule coming up; it's it's going to be hard. We have to we have to pull something out of our ass to get a victory. I mean, Hoffenheim at home. Then we go to the Pokal at Hoffenheim right after that. Three days later, then we got hurt to Berlin. That's a must win there. If 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 not, all of these are Freiburg, who's up there in the top of the table. Werder Bremen, who's on top of the table. Mainz. They can be had in Bayern after that. Um, it doesn't get any easier. So we're going to have to really come together and figure something out. I don't know if it needs to be a players-only meeting and figure something out. Because like you said, the coach can only do so much. The players on the pitch have to do something. And they can't string passes together to save their life, especially going into the box. They're not for providing service there. Uh, they have to figure something out. And you know, injuries to guys like Salazar, who's a big core of the team. Vandenberg's a new guy. Everyone needs to step up. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're not doing enough to get our players in a position to provide service consistently. But even when when they have opportunities, it's like, you know, the box is a relatively large thing to aim at. And, and the fact that, like, once again, these balls are going 
10, you know, 10 feet over people's heads and then like out for, you know, throw-ins and corners. Like it's, that that's not a Cromer thing. That's just, I don't know what that is, but that needs to change as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, this is a, this is a super deep cut, but I mean, there was a number of years ago, probably in our early days in the podcast where we had a game against Bayern that, that I think it was probably under Tedesco, honestly, like tactically it was just pure hoofball. Um, and I think that was also maybe a game where DeSanto got subbed out and was like upset about it, which I like got went on a rant about. Cause I was like, you know, anyway, but like, that seems to be our entire philosophy, like that approach against a team like Bayern, which I was critical of at the time, but you can understand because it's like, we can't play with Bayern, right? Like we can't, we can't play a, right. a normal game. This is the only way that we have an opportunity to potentially like, you know, catch them, you know, at the break. That seems to be how we're approaching almost every game, regardless of opponent. And, the, and that is not the mentality that it's, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's not going to translate to safety. It just isn't. Um, yeah. And it's not how we started the season, in my opinion. We didn't look like we were reverting to that. This is a recent development. Um, I don't know if, like, Cromer, once again, has lost faith that, like, you know, his personnel is incapable of of executing a preferred game plan. Um, and so he's like, hey, let's do this. Let's utilize, once again, you know, the, uh, the physicality of a couple of these people and see if we can just be, like, really defensively solid and whatever. But that isn't working either. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of at a loss. And, uh I'll probably just keep rambling if we uh, <laughs> extend this. But, yeah, yeah. It, it's bad. It, it's Ar not good, folks. Arguably, the worst part of our game at the moment is our defense. It's not the offense. I mean, the offense, it is the offense. It is the offense. But I think the defense is everything worse against Labor Because we're yeah, leaking yeah. goals left and right. Um, Dirk says uh, if we lose a game against Heppenheim, I'm sure Kramer will be gone. I'm not so sure. I mean, I would have I thought he would have been gone by Leverkusen, but... You never know. Uh, again, this is Schroeder's boy. I think I think it's a performance thing. I think if it's a bad performance, he might yeah. be gone. I think if it's like you know a close result that shows improvement, they might give him a little bit more time. But looking at some of the news, um, looks like uh, former Gladbach center back uh, Timothy Kolaichik, uh is on trial at Schalke. So obviously we need defensive health, and so they bring back bring in the center back, and then also um, the Swiss striker from FC Sion. Philip Stojkovic uh, has confirmed he's received an offer from Schalke. I don't know if it's for a managerial job or to play center, but uh, yeah. So, I mean, potentially some new bodies coming in. It seems like it's maybe Kramer telling Schroeder, hey, I need the bodies because these guys aren't working it. I don't know. Um, I think it's a mix. I think I don't think it's just Kramer. And I don't think it's just the players. Like, I think it's a mix of both. Um, they need to figure it out quick. Um, Kramer needs to figure it out quick if he wants to keep his job. But, you know. That if you want any chance of salvation for the season, they need to turn it around quickly or make a change to make that happen. I don't know. And, and the, the, there's almost certainly going to have to be some January activity, whether it's loan moves or whatever, because of you know how thin we are at the back now, um, mm, and yeah. how and in addition to how thin we are at the back, how unconvincing Yoshida is is increasingly appearing um, as the season progresses. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, play, like, center back comes like, like can't wait for Kaminsky to get healthy enough. Honestly, yes. at this point, I just want I just want to see what he looks like at this point. You know what I mean? Like it's, I mean, obviously Yoshida at thirty four. You know, rotate him out, get him so he doesn't have to play like a full ninety minutes almost every game. I think he played like eighty in this one against Leverkusen. Yeah, um, probably not the best frame at this point, but uh, so if, if Kaminsky yeah. comes back healthy, is he starting over Yoshida with Grimal, or are you doing Yoshida and Kaminsky? What are you looking at defense was? I, I for some reason I doubt that they're going to drop Yoshida, um, and it's not that Grimal didn't have a couple moments in this one, but sure. I think over the past two games Grimal's looked better. Um, yeah, and I thought last, uh, when he came in for Vandenberg, uh, that he actually yeah. looks like surprisingly like organized and competent, kind of off the bat. So yeah, uh, and he was somebody that we kind of like had you know a little bit of optimism for when that signing was initially announced, and then like he just kind of you know disappeared for a bit for whatever reason, but. Um, the problem is, as far as the January transfer window stuff goes, um, I mean, if, if Cromer even makes it that far, right? But <laughs> like, but let's just, let's just say that he still has the job as we're heading in there. Are you right. going to execute a, a January loan or transfer window based off of the desires of a coach who may not be there, you know, into February? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like deep into February. So I, that's that's another question. I feel like that's another thing you have to like potentially pull the trigger earlier, get somebody else in, then allow him to have a brief window to at least bring in like a couple lone players or something that maybe fit whatever tactical ideas and setup he has yep. to give him something to work with and then see how that goes. I don't know. But um, 
yeah, uh, certainly would like to have something in place before the World Cup, I would say. I agree 100% of that. Um, it's funny. W- one thing we didn't bring up uh, from the game that we kind of joked about last podcast defensive-wise is Crawl playing defense. And we joked, like, who else are you going to put in there? Put in Crawl, see what he can do. And he he played defense uh, for a few minutes there. I forget how long exactly, but uh, it happened. I don't think he did bad necessarily. But, uh, yeah, that's I can see why we're looking for another center back just because we don't have the depth at the moment. Um yeah, I wish I could be there and practice, see what they're doing. Not that I would be able to offer anything because I know I can't. But just to see what you know how it, how the team is looking. You know, are the, does the team feel full of confidence and they're training hard, or is it lackluster? People not caring. Um, it was always interesting tonight. I was, you know, I don't know if you watch those all or nothing shows, right? I just I just binge watched the Arsenal one. It's pretty good. I'd love to see something like Shock. Maybe not necessarily Shock, but something of a team like that to see. You know, the team who's struggling how how they're coping with the ups and downs, especially all the downs. And I think with Schalke, it would be interesting to see, in particular in this situation, probably more so the couple years ago when we got relegated and we had the Amin Hari and and Bu, uh, not Bujlab, um, Bentaleb and all those guys having those issues. But even some more now with guys like veterans and other team doing so well last year than this year is just complete 180 almost. Yeah, the series we're looking for is called Sunderland Till I Die. Um, uh, yes, I have seen this. That. Yeah, that's, that's great... pretty much exactly what you're looking yes. for. But um, to uh, to Dirk's point in the chat here, I mean, yeah, it is fair. Like they have they have pace on that team, so I'm not saying that like it's exclusively that. But Yoshida looked very exposed, and some of that maybe like once again tactical. We can't we can't put him in positions where he's exposed like that on the counter, and we need to be maybe playing a deeper line. I don't know what the situation is, but. Um, he in particular, I thought, looked inept against them as opposed to everybody else. Same thing with um, Augsburg. He would make some, some mistakes that were not good. Uh, Dortmund, I thought he was okay, but the last two games, he's really shown my fears that I've seen in him, uh, especially over the last four years, I would say. Uh, not necessarily his whole career, because he used to be a really good defender uh, with St. Uh, Southampton back in the day, but um last several years his the pace is what's been killing him uh and then basically what we saw was gonna say st mary's like the stadium (laughs) yeah yeah i almost didn't i almost did (laughs) no but once once again for me it's 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 not even so much like hey he's getting beat on the counter like we knew that about yoshida coming into the season that that was you know potentially a liability in his game it's once again it's been it's been the change over the past couple matches past few matches in his composure and possession in our defensive final third, which I've found to be lacking now. And he's the one almost making more mistakes, getting caught on the ball than anybody else, which once again, for a 34 year old experienced head that you're kind of bringing in to do a job for a single season, that's the opposite of what you're looking for out of a player like that. So that needs to get tightened up um, rapidly in my opinion. And and two guys who have been pretty much the rock for us this year, at least when they played together, certainly Kraus, but also flick as well. They didn't look that great in this game either. I mean, didn't, nobody did. I, like it's that formation of just giving Leverkusen the ball and trying to defend for our lives and counterattack when we don't have the pace to do the counterattack. Uh, was really making us struggle. Um, but yeah, Kraus really ineffective in this game, as was Flick. And so, I mean, I can't say anybody was effective in this game. Even Bruner, you know, though they kind of avoided him because Frimpong was feasting on the on the one side. I mean, they still did some things on, other, on Bruner's side as well. That wasn't like Bruner was. Um, um, yeah, and Bruner kind of this. partially at fault for the fourth goal as well. Yeah, um, yeah. He just wasn't alert to the danger. Um, so. The the one positive of the match, if we're gonna okay. find one thing to kind of end on before we, you know, this all it ended. Bloom, but uh, I'm saying, that, yeah, there's that. Uh, the one positive is that um, some of the the things that we've said about Iden, once again, looking to be true certainly has more of an eye for the offensive uh, you know, part of the game, can make runs and see things and opportunities and moments to kind of take off and get up there. Great pace, honestly, as well, um, yep. closing people down. and, and, and uh, He's booked and, up. Yeah, for sure, yeah. And he, he had some wayward deliveries in this one too. I'm not absolving sure. him of those issues as well. But like, I think at least there's a hint of a spark there of you're like, look, we can do something potentially down the right-hand side that, you know. We've kind of been lacking because as solid as Bruner was to start the season defensively as a right back wasn't wasn't contributing much on that end. And then, you know, in a season that we've said is kind of down for Thomas Ovean overall, um, we need we need one of those sides to be providing something. Yeah. Um, to help contribute and get that delivery in. I don't know. I don't know what the 
uh, statuses of Kaminsky. I know he had some minor work done a, a few months ago in September, and so I don't know if he'll be ready yet, but assuming he's not, um, this weekend against Hoffenheim, I'd like to see, obviously, Scholoff in goal. I'd like to see Oyon, Yoshida Grimal, and Brunner. Midfield, I'd like to see Aiden on the right, more on the left, Crawl, uh, crawl, excuse me, no crawl. Uh, Kraus and uh, Kraus and Flick with Bulter, not Polter, Bulter and Toroto. I like to see a 4 4 2. That would give us, you know, I then and more a chance to really push up, make it more of a 4 2 4, and then uh, give some service, hopefully, to Toroto. And hopefully, Bulter can do what he can do, let him roam around like he likes to do. But uh, I don't know. We need to get think outside the box and stop picking the same damn players every week when it doesn't work. And Zidi Zali at striker, who says no? I'm just kidding. No, I, I I like that call from you. Um, I I did it in the midfield and, and more. I mean, like at, at this point, it's like what I mean, like I'll do anything to try to like yeah get a spark going on the offensive in the last couple of games. It's just not been good. Despite you know, once again, there was a very slick goal score with Torada and, and Drexler last week. So I'm not trying to say that like we haven't done anything, but like those are those moments have, <laughs> have been few and far between. And, and Dirk saying no, Patriciani in the chat, which uh, no, unfortunately, sorry, Patriciani, not uh, <laughs> not on the preferred eleven for us at the moment on the bench. Yeah, we appreciate it though. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't think about that. Drexler. Um, I still, I, I think at this point, Drexler, you bring him off the bench. Um, but I think you need pace. You need pace. You need service from the, from the wings. And I think more and I then can provide that. Uh, and then, you know, Flick and Kraus have worked well together this, this year. There's no doubt about that. Kraus has been our best guy. Um, and Boultry can't take him off. He's our leading goal scorer. So, I don't know if someone has to take the take the bench from this. I, I think it has to be Drexler. But you know, if, if I then or more are not starting, then sure, Drexler put him in. He's been fantastic this year too. And yeah, and you know, and, and Bolter may be able to create a goal out of thin air based yeah. on you know, sure, sure uh, pure anger as fuel, if nothing else. <laughs> um, so when things are going dark, he may be able to you know look inward and just conjure up some uh, some angry magic or something. But. uh yeah, I don't know. I mean, here's 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 one final question for you. At what no. point does Toronto get dropped? Yeah, I was just thinking. I was like, what if you went Bolter as a lone striker because he's got a little bit of pace to him, and then insert Drexler in there. I mean, and it's not that part of it is Toronto not doing what he did last year, right? Is that Bundesliga thing in his head? I don't know. Not but winning also, duels either. He's not winning duels. Nothing in the air. Like, but he's also not getting service, and it's hard. But I think. Another poor showing where they're not servicing him or he's not putting the ball away. Try something else. And that, that something else has to be Bolter. I mean, Caraman and Poulter, while they, I'm sure, could do the job if they get service. If we're not getting service, there's no point in having any three of those big guys out there and just leave Bolter. Bolter's at least mobile and he can create his own <laughs> anger or goals, um, get on the wing and really create some things. Uh, move the defenses around but uh yeah i mean i i love Toroto. i got his jersey obviously but if he's not getting the service and he's missing some key opportunities he's missed more this year i believe than he did last year and last year we're talking about a full season i haven't i've seen more misses this year it feels like and maybe it just it's blown up now because he's not scoring but i'm noticing a lot more misses this year than last year for clear scoring opportunities yeah, I think that's fair. Um, and then I'm just on the aerial dual front just because it's amusing. Uh, Iden, um, two of four, successful oh. in his aerial dues in this game. Uh, Toronto was two of eight. Um, so <laughs> your, your, your dominion. How many of those right are Sholoff passes? What are Sholoff's numbers? Fair. I want to know his, yeah, his yeah. completion percentages of those long passes. I'm assuming it's still terrible. I brought that up. Though. I've looked 10%. at that like the last couple podcasts before we gone live. <laughs> just but like, you know, like once again, like his short and medium range passes completion compared to his long. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, I just thought that was interesting, um, that you're, you're short right back and have more success in there than Tarada can, but that's been a consistent issue all season. So, um, and I, I don't want to drop him and it, to, to Dirk saying, either. you know, it's the, cur- it's the curse. The first, like we, we're all rooting for, for Toronto. Like we like him. Um, we, we want him to be successful, but in the current setup of the team, the way we're playing right now, if we can't provide him service, I would rather have an extra midfield body. You know what I mean? Like you said, put Bolter up top solo or something along those lines, bring somebody else into the midfield or do something, you know, in an area where we can help win the ball and create options for building up. Um, it, we can't just keep wasting bodies up the pitch on these like sort of dual, you know, striker partnerships 
when we're not being able to provide the service at all. It's, it's, it's making it different, more difficult for us to get the ball in the final third in general, in my opinion, because of um, the numerical advantages that are being created elsewhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if, I mean, I think if Toronto was at Verta Bremen, I think he'd be scoring still. I know the one year when he was at Cologne and he moved up and he didn't score and they put in Modesta and he started scoring like crazy. So maybe it is part of that too, but uh, I, I still have faith in him. But at some point, faith or not, you have to change something that's not working and him not scoring is not working. At least for Dirk and I, we got hockey coming on here so we can kind of cha- avert our attention here a little bit. I see the Oilers uh, logo there, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's something it, I'm going to be paying very close attention to the Hoffenheim match, to all the body language. Are they, you know, are they feeding the big guys up top, assuming Poulter and Toroto start in this one? Um, but I'm curious because you would imagine, like you said, if the results aren't any better, or we get demolished again. Something's going to happen. I don't know, but I don't know who they bring in, and will the cycle end? I don't know, but uh, it's so hard to watch. It's so hard to watch. It's like watching Juventus today. <laughs> Allegri ball. Allegri ball. Yeah, that's what we're playing like. Allegri ball. Oh, anyway. Enough ranting for today. Uh, unless you had anything else you wanted to rant about. No, nah, just shout out. You get you guys played uh, Tel Aviv, right? Uh, oh, I don't like Juventus, but yes, Juventus played uh, Maccabi yeah, Haifa. Yeah, 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 there yeah. You go. So, uh, yeah. sorry, yeah. Uh, but uh, shout out then to uh, technically U.S. goalkeeper Josh Cohen uh, <laughs> with the yeah. clean sheet against Juve in the Champions League, also with some saves on like Messi and company when they played PSG early. He so, looked good uh, today. He did look good today. Um, yeah, Cohen to Qatar. Who says no? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, him and Pifak, right? Um, go cool. seriously though, Pifak, yeah, yeah, uh, Bundesliga thing. So, um, all right, that's all I had for today. Um, yeah, I don't got any shout outs. I got shout out to everyone who watches, comes to watch along with us, uh, enjoys in the misery, and then uh, shout out to Dirk and everybody else who's been in the chat with us, uh, what, listening in along, and then obviously anyone who listens in the podcast as well. Um, any shout outs for you? Uh, shout out to uh, my Chicago Red Stars on making the playoffs. This is actually a Chicago Red Stars hat. It's nice. Back, you can't see it, but uh, yeah, they haven't had a particularly uh, easy week with some things that have uh, mm, yeah, they, they yeah. The report they can't the Gates report, but yeah. Anyway, made the playoffs and uh, you know best wishes to them this fall. Dirk, I did not watch the Classic. Um, I saw the result. I saw what happened late. Uh, that game ended in a draw, and Goretzka praising. Dortmund uh I did I did not watch it um I wanted to watch uh other games this I, I don't know we don't watch things where Dortmund gets praised as a general rule of thumb so <laughs> yeah Gretzka should know him. this Gretzka should know this um but let us know what we missed for sure in the uh on Twitter let us know on Twitter or Facebook whatever you please all right let's wrap this one up Jack uh, where can our followers find you if they want to share the misery with you at JM and at J-M-M-A-N-G-A-N. I, I messed it up finally. I said at twice. Yes! That was was it was this week nine. Match Jack Rouse. Nine. I was no. I was eight. I was eight for eight. I was like Schalke at the end of last Bundes, uh, Bundesliga two campaign, just firing on all cylinders. Uh, <laughs> J-M-M-A-N-G-A-N on Twitter, where you can uh, follow me, even though I never tweet, and I'm solely a uh, consumer of content rather than a publisher. Hmm. There you go. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can. I'd rather you follow Shock America, but follow me at R underscore K H A R M A N. Uh, if you are listening in, make sure you follow and subscribe to our YouTube page as well. We'll try to create some more videos um, and provide content for you guys. Uh, let's see. Last thing, uh, <laughs> Joseph. It was good to see Joseph in the house. Glukov, everyone. Glukov. Um, yeah, that's it. We'll catch you guys on the watch along. On when is the game? Saturday, Sunday? I don't even know. It's on the weekend. So anyway, <laughs> we'll catch you then. For Jack, I'm Richard. Glugauf. Glugauf.